said enough to the Ephesians, but he couldn't, he, he wouldn't stop there. There's even more possibilities for them and for all the saints, he said. By the way, he included all saints in, uh, with the Ephesians. So he prays a prayer that, to say the least, is so profound that it'll, it just nearly stop your heart. I know my experience of salvation through the mighty act of justification while God remained righteous as he was justifying me. All accomplished at the cross was, it, it is so moving, it's so personal, so soul shattering, so profound that I tend to want to just proclaim it continuously. Yet that profundity is only a beginning. So Paul wants these Ephesians who, who's experienced that. You, there is more for you. There's a lot more for you. And I, I'm going to pray for it. I'm going to fall on my knees and pray for it. There's additional blessings. And you've got to reach high. I'm not praying to get out of prison. I'm not praying they don't beat me 39 lashes again. I'm not praying for my thorn to be removed. I'm not even praying for y'all's daily bread. I'm not praying that you may prosper and be in good health. Those are all appropriate. Amen. But uh, we got to first seek the kingdom and his righteousness. We, we got to get up. We got to get high. Amen. That only took him four verses. It only took him 80 words. But they're profound. Paul asked first, God, I want the Ephesians and all the saints that their inner man might be strengthened yeah. according to the riches of my glory. Yeah. Well, why do you need the inner man strengthened for? You can count on one thing. The outer man's gone. It, it, it's... Uh, I'll pray for you tonight that you live to be a hundred, but I don't care if I prayed for you to live to be two hundred. It is gone. Count it gone. I'm going to pray. When I get sick, come anoint me with oil and pray over me, but it ain't going to last. And the sooner you understand that, the better off you're going to be and worry about that inner man. Paul said, God, I want you to strengthen their inner man. Well, why does the inner man need to be strengthened other than it's the only man that we got that's going to survive? We want it to be strong from a negative point of view. That inner man needs strengthened because our struggle is against principalities and powers of rulers of darkness, this world, spiritual wickedness, high places. But I'd rather focus on the positive side. The very greatness of the riches of glory requires a big inner man that needs to be strengthened to hold the riches of glory. When you receive those things such as Christ dwelling in your hearts by faith, when you receive the fullness of God, the love of God, when you receive such things, you're receiving strong meat. You need a strong inner man, and Paul wanted that to be strengthened. But he continues his prayer. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Again, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants in there to sup with you and you with him, and that's what he's doing now. With his people, the church, that fellowship was what was lost in Adam. It's now regained. And I'm telling you, when you open the door, that thrills God, it thrills angels, and it ought to thrill you. Amen. We individually and collectively as the church become the habitation of divinity. Now, Paul so personally had experienced this that he could say, you know, I live. No, it's not me that lives. It's Jesus that lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith as the Son of God. Now, if Christ is living in the inner man, then he is manifesting himself there. 
to you, and therefore, when he manifests himself to you, he is manifesting God to you. Amen. Now, these things are real. Let me tell you what. I, what you eat tonight is not too real, but I know it won't, it won't last. I mean, you'll be, uh, in the morning, you won't be hungry again. You know? But these things are real. You can't see it with the eye, but they are real. And if you ask me how it happened, you've asked the wrong question. I want you to believe that it is happening first. Amen. I'm more interested in the reality of it than the mechanics involved. I'm much more concerned about what he's doing and why he's doing it than how he is doing it. And if I'll be more concerned about that, then he might even reveal how he's doing it. Now, it is not, I do know this, it's not Christ among you, but it is Christ in you that is the hope of glory. Amen. Now, I know he's got to be for you before he can be in you. I'll grant that. But it is far more than him being for you. He must be in you. And once he is in you, there ain't enough room for you in there too. Amen. So out you go. Amen. So, and... and you're not going to crucify yourself otherwise. But when he gets in there, now God can work both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now Paul just continues prayer and I'm about through. He wants you to comprehend with all the saints about this breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled. This is in order that you can be filled with the fullness of God. Now, I want you to comprehend the unknowable, what he says. I want you to know something that can't be known. Well, actually, that's, that's what the Spirit can do. It can reveal the unknowable to you. Actually, the church, these matters that pass as knowledge are matters that can be known, even though they take an eternity because of their vastness. And they will intrigue you through eternity. Now start now and you'll find great joy and bring God glory as he prepares you for heaven. Yep, it's broad. It redeemed out of every kindred tongue, people, and nation. 10,000 times 10,000, thousands of thousands, great multitudes which no man could know. It's broad. But it's long too. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. It began before the foundation of the earth. It's written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the earth. Thine is an unchanging love. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's long. It's deep. It can come all the way down here. Deep. Divesting himself of the prerogatives of divinity. Become a man in a world of sin suffered at the hands of his own creation. The author of life crucified on the cross, laid in a grave. And all that while you was a still sinner. Is that not deep? It's deep. It's high. It'll raise you to the heavenly places. It won't just forgive you. It'll make you good. It's not just to blot out your sins. It's to rebirth you pure. It's not just to save you from wrath. It's to make you a son, an heir, a joint heir. It's so high that it's you are his body. That's how high it is. And to realize just a portion of this breadth and length and depth and height is transforming so Paul wanted all the saints, I want you all to comprehend this 